Hello my little artist friends, welcome back. I hope you are continuing to like my videos and continuing to make some art projects for yourself and for your families. I hope you guys are having fun and keep liking my projects. Uh, if you have any other ideas, shoot me an email uh, through the Academy email or I think I sent out my personal email. Uh, also, if you are creating some of these things, I would love to see them. I would love to see what you guys have been working on, whether it's my projects or other people's projects. I hope you and your families are continuing to stay clean, stay safe, stay healthy, um, and keeping active, whether it's active with art, active with sports, active with schoolwork, active with reading. Um, but yeah, also make sure you're getting outside, enjoying some of that fresh air. I know it's getting warm and then cool, warm and then cool. So just, you know, make sure you get out there, out of the house, enjoy some of that weather that we are having, um, whether it's a little chilly or if it's really nice, please take advantage of it. Um, so I hope you guys are doing well and staying healthy. So I thought for this week, we would focus on some sea creatures. So I have a couple sea creature projects or like oceany projects. So I thought we would think in the mindset of under the sea. Um, if you guys are fans of Little Mermaid, you know what I'm talking about. Or if you haven't seen Little Mermaid, I recommend that you watch Little Mermaid because it's one of my faves. Um, my favorites, I should say. Um, so I hope you guys are having fun, whatever you may be doing. So what I think you guys are gonna be needing today is if you have a canvas, great, use it. Um, I know especially the little ones really enjoy, you know, having something new to work on. They don't know what this is. They're like, oh, this is kind of cool. This is different. So if you have a canvas, go ahead, pull it out, have the little kiddos have at it. Um, but if you don't, I apologize, and I, I totally understand if you don't have canvas, but if you don't, try to find like a thicker piece of paper, even a cardboard, if you have like a spare piece of cardboard around, or you could just use regular printer paper if you have it. Like I said, use what you have at home. I don't want you guys to go out and buy um, a whole bunch of different materials, uh, but you know, just the basics like paint, crayons, whatever you have. Um, construction paper, that's always good. Uh, and you could find, get them online or at the store, uh, whichever, or I like shopping at the dollar store, but that's just me. Uh, <laughs> but it's also the quality of materials. Uh, you might want to go to a craft store or shop online, depending on what kind of quality you want. Um, so for this, if you have a piece of paper or canvas, go ahead and use that. If you have uh, other pieces of paper. It could be regular printer paper. I use like a different color so that way the kids know um, what they're going to be painting necessarily. So I have my little fishies here and then what the kiddos are going to do is that they're going to paint over the fishies. They're not going to peel the paper up yet. That's going to be the last part. And then we're going to do some color mixing today. Um, learn about some different color mixing and then I have some other fish side projects or like ocean side projects that we could do. Um, so let's get started. So if you have paint, I have green, uh, blue, and yellow. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna do some color mixing. So what does blue and yellow make? I want you guys to think about what blue and yellow make. If you don't know, we're gonna learn today what blue and yellow makes. Also, I have these handy dandy little tools, some I made, some I bought. Now these ones are circle sponges. I think they sell these at the dollar store, but I'm not sure. Um, I think I may have saw, seen them once, I don't know. But uh, these I got at the craft store. They're just circle sponges. You can make them at home too. Um, if you just take a regular like, just like a spongy sponge that you use for dishes at home cut it into a circle and then glue like a stick or even a clothespin um, onto uh, your sponge, you can make one of these. These probably are super easy to make. I just, you know, bought these, but you can make your own, own tools. Also, if you don't have those, 
and need something a little bit like more convenient. If you have clothes pins, great. If you don't, um, you could just hold things with your hands or have the kiddos hold, hold things with their hands. Or you could just put it right there in your clothes pin and you have an instant brush. And it keeps the kiddos hands from getting all dirty um, if you don't want that. I totally understand. Or if you don't have a uh, so this is just a cotton ball, but you could also use pom-pom balls. Now, if you don't have a pom-pom ball, you could always use cotton balls. So just think about what you have and what you don't have. Um, now, if you don't have any of that or don't have the desire to buy it or make it, that's perfectly fine. You could just have the kiddos use their fingers. Now, when they use their fingers on this, that is my little iffy scenario because when they want to use their fingers, they want to just spread the paint around like this and then the paper is gonna lift up. So that's why I don't advise using their fingers, but if that's the only thing they have, or you guys have, everybody has a finger, or at least I hope so. Um, so if you guys have a finger, you can also do this. It, just, it would just take a little bit more time, but it's totally doable. So, and then for another side project, I'm going to show you, so we're not going to start that one yet, I'm just showing what we're going to possibly be doing. So this one is another fish activity. Um, these are just using, uh, what's it called? <laughs> uh, sorry. Oh, um, cupcake liners, cupcake liners, for the cupcake tin, yeah, cupcake liners. Um, these I just had in the art room, and I'm like, hmm, maybe I could use these. So if you have some lying around the house, perfect. Uh, these are super easy to do. You just have the kiddos glue these down. You know, have them maybe draw some smiley faces on their fishies. Have them draw some eyes, or you could use uh, some googly eyes. And then cut out some fins for them. And then using a white crayon, they could draw some bubbles. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so... That's another project, and then if we get to that one, I'll probably show that one. And then I have this other one. This is gonna be a jellyfish. I don't know if it looks like a jellyfish, but this is my jellyfish. And I used using uh, the cupcake things, the cupcake liners. But if you don't have that, you could always just use circles. And I'll show you how to do it with circles too, just in case you don't have them. Um, and I'll give a little brief information uh, for your kiddos on how to draw a circle or, you know, practice circles. Or if they don't really know how to draw a circle and they want to use like a little cheat, cheat cheat kind of thing, they could use a lid. Um, so I'll just go over that too. But this is a fun little one. It's just a jellyfish and it's just using cupcake liners, string, and googly eyes. But if you don't have googly eyes, we can always make some. Alrighty, sorry for all my jibber jabber. Um, we're gonna get started. So go ahead, find some blue paint, yellow paint, green paint if you have it. Um, if you just have blue and yellow, then we could totally make green. All right, give me one second. I'm just gonna turn this down so you guys can see. And then I would also get a pencil or a marker, whatever you choose, because we're gonna, I'm gonna show you how to draw a fish as well. Sorry, I didn't state that before. Ooh. Sorry guys, this is always the tricky part. My tripod doesn't wanna stay all the time. There we go. Okay, I'll just scooch, scooch things up. Okay, very good. Alrighty. And say you don't have any like paints at home or anything like that, you could always try to do things with like markers or crayons. It's just a little, you know, trickier, but there's definitely a lot of things that you could do with crayons, colored pencils, all sorts of things. So I'm gonna put this to the side just so we're gonna start drawing a fish. So go ahead, kiddos, uh, grab a pencil because you may make a mistake and I want you guys to be able to erase it. 
find a pencil with a good eraser. I'm going to draw with a marker so that way you guys can see. Oh, I forgot to put some music on. All right. So I'm going to draw with a marker so that way you could see a little bit better. Because I don't want things getting lost. And I might zoom in too so that way you guys could see it a little bit better because this room doesn't have the best lighting, but um, we work with what we got. Can't work in the dark. Um, but I'm going to zoom in so that way you could see it a little better because the light is going to reflect off the pencil or not make it show as well, especially with my camera. Okay, so here we go. Sorry. All right, we are starting. So. What we're gonna do is we're gonna draw a fish. Now, if you don't know how to draw one, that's fine. I'm gonna do it twice so that way you could see. And it's a little easier if you use pencil, but I'm gonna show with marker first. So, start off with an oval. Try your best. And then on the right side or the left, doesn't matter, we're gonna do another oval and then another oval and if one's bigger than the other that's fine too it doesn't matter now I'm gonna show you in pencil again so oval could be a big oval small oval Just like that. And if you want, you could erase some things to make it look a little nicer. And there you go, you have a tail. So all I did was erase. So I had two ovals like this, right? They could have been overlapping and then I had my oval. So the reason why these ovals are close to this oval is because like that's going to be the tail, and that connects to the body. So this is the body. Now, if you want to get rid of these lines and make it look like one big fish, like this, and you don't have any lines in your fishy, you could do that too. You just have the body and the tail. I'm going to show you how. So go ahead. You're going to erase these lines right in here. So... Just like that. And there you go, you have a full fish now. And you don't have the lines for the tail. But see, I drew the fish like this first so that way you could see the first step. Now if you guys have pencil, you could erase those lines, but since I did it with marker first, I can't erase. See? It's not going to erase. So that's why I say go ahead and use pencil. But the reason why I use marker is so you guys uh, watching can see it a little bit better. Alrighty. Now, for whoever else is watching, if you want to cut around the step and do something totally different, you can. I have another idea for you. Um, if you go online and print out a picture of a fish, you could totally do that and then cut it out for your kiddos. Um, just like a fish silhouette. And there's like so many different fish silhouettes, silhouettes ugh, out there. Um, it's crazy. Like, there's so many different kinds of fish out there. You could do any fish you want. You could have your kiddos do sharks if they're into sharks, or you could have them do jellyfish or whatnot, uh, dolphins if they're really into dolphins, or uh, crabs, or lobsters, or whatever. Sea turtles. Sea turtles are awesome. So you could have them do any uh, kind of sea creature they want. You just have to maybe find it online or draw it for them. So here's another fish, but it's going to be a little bit different. This was just a very fast fish, but see how much different that is compared to this one? So if you want to do something a little bit more challenging or like do something a little bit more complex, 
for them to do, uh, that's fine because this is going to be painted over regardless. Um, same thing with these guys. All right. So like I so instead of like these fish, you could do this one. Depending on what you want on your canvas or their canvas or whatever they're into. So they could do whatever they're into. You could do a rocket ship too. It doesn't have to be ocean themed. Uh, so then after they have a fish or you print one or you draw one, whichever, we're gonna go ahead and cut it out. Now if your kiddos don't know how to use scissors yet, this is a good practice for them since it is a simpler shape. Or if you don't feel like they are up for it, go ahead and cut it out for them. Now kiddos, I do want you guys to practice with scissors because that's a very important skill to learn. But if you know that this is a little tricky for you, please ask for help, okay? I don't want nobody cutting off fingers. All right, that's a no-no. All right, see? All righty. So then next, what we're gonna do is we are going to go ahead and tape your fish down. Now, if you want to do multiple fish and you don't want to draw it more than once, you could have your kiddo um, trace it. So using a different piece of paper. Sorry. So using a different piece of paper, you could have your kiddo trace the first fish you did just to make it a little easier on them. So have them, you could tape it down for them too. See, there you go. And then you could just have them trace. And then peel very gently. Oops. So the reason why I'm making another fish is I didn't like my other one. So, and that's okay. If you don't like your fish, try again. Try to make another another one, one that you like. Now, say you drew all the fish and you're tired of drawing fish and you are so done with it, maybe go ahead and print one out. It's okay. I know some things are hard. Okie doke. Alrighty. I have, because I want to do three fish on here. Or, I don't know. That may look a little crowded, so I might, yeah, that looks a little crowded. Mm. Yeah, so I don't think I'm going to add this third fish. It looks a little too crowded for my taste, but if your kids want like five fish on here, they might have to be smaller, but they could do five fish. That is totally up to them, and you may want to suggest it, but it's up to you. If they want to do all three, that's fine too. I just might, I'm going to show you if you want to add some other things here and there. You could also do that. All right. So once you have your fish, go ahead. Once it's all cut out and everything, we're going to add some tape. Now, the reason why we're not gluing it is because we want to take these fish off once we're all painted. So all you're going to do, I recommend masking tape, but if you have scotch tape, go ahead and use that. Um, like I said, use what you got. Use what you have, got, have. So take a little piece and then roll it into like a little circle. Now, I recommend two pieces or more. So if you know your kiddo is going to rip up some of this paper and paint is going to get underneath it, then I would glue it, or not glue it, ugh, tape it down a little bit more. So that way they're not trying to peel it up or paint is getting underneath. So I'm going to, and then have your kids, um, so kiddos, try to arrange them in different ways. See what you like. If you want the paper like this and you want the fish swimming down, 
you could do that or you could have the fish swimming towards each other or you could have the fish swimming up it's totally up to you you could have one swimming this way one fish swimming up totally up to you I actually might keep it this way I kind of like that all right so once you have this all completed, now it's time for the paint. All right, I know you guys are excited. All righty, so go ahead and choose whatever materials you have. If you have just a finger, use your finger. Um, I'll probably show that too. Now each one of these is gonna do something different. So you might wanna try it out on a different piece of paper. If you want a certain thing, so I'm going to start with blue, maybe test it on a piece of paper. So this one, that's like a perfect circle. Um, I'm going to do this one in yellow. Uh, that one, not a perfect circle, but you know what? It's something. It's a print or a mark. And then green. I'm going to show you green. Woohoo! Oh my gosh. <laughs> there we go. It's something. You might want to squish it a little bit more. There we go. So I recommend maybe these two possibly if you have them. Um, but like I said, if you don't, then you don't. <laughs> that is totally okay. All right, so once you have that, go ahead and have your kiddos start with blue. So kiddos, if you are listening, go ahead and start with blue. Here we go. It could be a lot, it could be a little. And then I want you to start around the fish. So go ahead. I want you to be half on the fish and half not on the fish. So go ahead. And I'm just going bloop, bloop, bloop. Kind of like what a fish sound makes. Bloop, bloop, bloop. Oop, and the tape is kind of coming off. So I kind of want you guys just to hop like a bunny. Boop, boop, boop. And we're going around the shape of the fish. Now, after you're around the fish, you're going to move to the other one. We're not going to peel this guy up yet, okay? I know you guys want to, but once you guys have painted, leave it alone. That has to dry. I know it's hard, but I need you guys to have some patience so that way things can dry. Alrighty, so go to our other fishy. And if you need more paint, ask for more paint. Either raise your hand, be like, I need more paint. Go ahead, raise your hand. I need more paint. I know you're at home, but it's still good to raise your hand. All right, now go ahead and you could cover the whole thing in blue if you want. But you're like, Miss Nikki, I also have yellow and green. And I know you kiddos want to dive into the other colors too. But not yet. Just do a little bit more blue. Just like that. Okay. Now see how I'm going nice and slow? I'm not going like this. And you want to know why? Because I'm actually making more of a print if I'm taking my time and going bloop, bloop. See how nice of a circle that is? If I just take my time, really press into it, and get a nice circle like that. If I go like this, I'll 
hyper and out of control, then it's not gonna make a nice circle. It's gonna make more kind of like little marks here and there. Now I want you guys to make nice circles. But if you wanna do that, I mean, you can, but you're gonna have to work a little bit harder to cover up the white spaces. Now I don't wanna see any white spaces. So go ahead. all over. Now if you have some yellow, go ahead into the yellow and you could add some green spots here and there because remember what blue and yellow make? Did you guys think about that? What do yellow and blue make? See I'm going into my yellow. This isn't green. This is yellow. But when I put it on my on my canvas or whatever I'm working on or my piece of paper, it's gonna look green because it mixed with the blue. So just remember, blue and yellow make green. Now if you don't like that, you could always go back to the blue and you could cover those spots. And you know what? It makes like an even darker green and it kind of makes it like kind of like a like a sea green. So I kind of like that. So if you want to mix some colors, go ahead. I'm not going to stop you. But if you want to just do blue, that's fine too. But remember, what color is the water of the ocean? It's going to be blue. Here we go. I'm going to need some more paint. I'm going to go through a lot of paint for this one. This is looking pretty good. Alrighty. So now, remember I said no white spaces. So that means if you are working on canvas, go ahead, lift it up. Whoever's helping you, have them lift it up for you if you want. Or you could just lift it up by yourself. I know some of you can do this, but if you want to just focus on your printmaking of your circles, focus on that. But get all of the sides. Doesn't take long. But make sure you get every white space, okay? Okay. There we go. Do, 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 do. This is looking nice. And you see how this is not really smooth. So when I say smooth, it's not as smooth. So think about what I just said. It's not that smooth. So what do you think I mean by that? So when I say that is this made a texture. So I know some of you guys don't know about texture yet, but that's okay. I'm going to give you a little tidbit about it. So say I just went like this with my brush. See how nice and smooth of a line that is? But when I lift it up, it made that kind of like texture. Well, I don't think you guys can see it, but See how nice and smooth that is? So that's what you're gonna get from a paintbrush. Now the reason why I'm having you hop like a bunny is that it also provides you with some of this awesome texture. See? Doesn't that look cool? Or you could just brush it on like this. I know some of you might wanna do that and you know what, that's perfectly fine. If that's what you're into and want to do, that's totally fine. I like getting that texture and hopping like a bunny. I feel like it adds a little bit more of the fun to it. There you go. See? Oh, did I cover all sides? But if you want to spread, that is totally fine. But if you don't like that too, you could always cover it with some texture. Just like that. All right. All right, 
Make sure you don't have any more white spots. Oh, here I have a white spot. Here I have a white spot, white spot, white spot. There we go. Getting all my white spots. Going back, checking my work, seeing I'm not having any white spots open. Okay. So now I'm going to put this off to the side and I'm going to let it dry. And you're going to be like, what? I want to peel it. I want to peel the fishies off and I want to see what, what happened. And I'm like, no, don't do that yet. We're going to let it dry for just a little bit. We, If you are so impatient and you don't want to wait, you could have someone in your family or whoever's watching you blow it with a hair dryer. You could do that or set it outside for a little while. Just make sure it doesn't blow away. It has been very windy recently. Okay, so put your paint off to the side. I think I'm gonna show the jellyfish because this is kind of a fun thing. So I'm gonna show you how to do a jellyfish for maybe about 10 minutes. And then we'll do the big reveal and then I'll show you what else you could add on your painting if you so choose. Um, you don't have to. But for your jellyfish, you're going to need a cupcake thing or a circle. I'm going to show you with both. Oh, I'm going to do a blue one. And then you're going to need yarn, scissors, glue, a marker, glue. And then googly eyes if you have them. But if you don't, totally understand. Ooh, I covered my googly eyes. Um, okay. So with this, what I'm gonna show you is if you have your cupcake thing, don't smush it or anything yet. But we're, what we're gonna do is I want you to hold it in your hand kind of like this. Kind of like you're making a mouth with your, kind of like you're doing this. Kind of looks like a cookie monster mouth or like a clam. You could also make little oysters out of these. I, I have seen projects for that. And all you do is you would put like a white pom-pom or a cotton ball or a marble in there. Have your kiddos kind of close it halfway like this and then put some eyes up here. Or you could just leave it like this. That's kind of like an oyster or clam, I think. Uh, but we're going to make a jellyfish. So go ahead and then have them fold it. Just like that. Kind of like a taco. So if you want to have them fold it up like this, you could do that. Or they could do it like this. Whichever make is fine. So now, have them cut some string. It could be however long or short they want. Uh, you might want to cut down on how long they're going to take, just depending on how much yarn you have or string. It could be yarn string. If you want them to do some measuring, so if you want to, if uh, kiddos, if you want to measure or have all your your stringies be the same length you're gonna measure okay so take so cut a piece the length that you kind of want and then to make your next piece look the same you're gonna put it right next to your original piece and then cut that piece from your yarn ball and there you go you have two equal pieces Now, you could also cut these in half and make a, like four more. But if you want long and stringy and long tentacles, you could have that. All right, I'm going to do a couple. Oops. So Jellyfish, I think they have a bunch of tentacles. I don't know if they have an exact number, but they have a lot. But an octopus, if you guys didn't know this, an octopus has eight tentacles or arms. Some people call them arms, some people call them tentacles. I think they're called tentacles. 
So octopuses, octopi, octopi, octopus, an oct, an octopus has eight tentacles, but a jellyfish has a lot more. But if you didn't know that before, I hope you learned something. You'd be like, I learned something from my art video today about an octopus. All right, so I have one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm just gonna do eight, because we were talking about eight. Okay, so I measured and cut all of my yarn or string that I'm gonna use. Now, if you want, you could glue the whole thing in here and press down but for mine I kind of spread mine out and if you want to give him like a haircut or like cut your tentacles a little bit more if you don't like them that long that's totally fine you could cut them down a little bit all right so next using some glue you're gonna open this back up and then you're gonna put glue right in here. You could put glue all over. Just kind of keep it away from this edge because we want, we don't want glue pouring out. So then take your yarn strand by strand, like one by one, and then you're gonna plop it in there, give it a little pat pat with your finger. Then he you're gonna do a line of them. So right next to this one, you're gonna add your second one. Give a little pat pat with your finger. And see how I'm not pressing that hard? That yarn is gonna wanna stick to that glue cause yarn loves glue. All right, there's number three, pat pat. And I'm working left to right. So here's number four, pat pat. And I'm going all the way to where I folded it. See? And see how it's looking? It's looking nice already. I hope you guys could see that. I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit. Okay. So I'm on number four, or I just finished number four. Okay. Here is number five. Right next to number four. Give it a little pat pat with my finger. Number six, pat pat. If you get some glue on your fingers, go ahead and rub your hands together. I find that works a little bit. Your hands might be a little sticky for a little bit, but that's okay, you could always wash your hands. Remember, wash those hands. We do want you guys to wash hands. Whether you're working on art projects or not, keep washing those hands. All right, so one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, here's number seven. Number seven, right next to number six. Pat, pat. And then number eight, last one. And it's gonna be all the way to the right. Well, not all the way, but next to number seven. Give it a little pat, pat. All right. So now you have your yarn or your tentacles for your jellyfish. So next, I want you to add a little bit more glue so that way when we fold it things will stick a little bit better so go ahead add some more glue go like this or you could do dot dot not a lot I prefer that method so dot put a dot here we're gonna need a lot of glue but try to keep away from the edge but just try your best all right so next we're gonna sandwich the yarn in here, kind of like a mouth, kind of like the mouth is eating that yarn. We're gonna go ahead and close it. Kind of flatten it with our hand. Give it a little pat pat if you need to. Pat pat. There we go. Alrighty, look. Now you could also change the shape of these. So if you don't like that shape, and you have some extra room on the sides, you 
could go ahead and cut that off. There we go. See? I'm going to do the same to the other side. So I'm just changing the shape of it. You don't have to do this. Ooh, how did that happen? Ooh, I had an ouch. Okay, so the problem with cutting that is that you will see some of your yarn in there maybe, but that's okay. You give it, pinch the sides just a little bit. Oh, sorry. So you'll see some of your yarn if you do cut some of the extra off, but you could always just go and pinch the pieces of cupcake liner together to cover those up. But you could also keep it like this. I also like this little guy. See, he looks happy. All right. And then next, I'm gonna change this one up a little bit. We're gonna add some googly eyes. So you could also make eyes out of paper and then color it in, or you could use marker, whichever. So place your eyes if you do have them like so, and then right under your eyes, go ahead and make a smile with your marker. So see, smile goes right under the eyes. Now say you don't have eyes. We don't have eyes. Go ahead and draw some eyes. So circle, circle, make two because we have two eyes. And then color it in with a little bit, make a little circle or oval with the black on the inside of that circle we just drew. And I'll show you what I, what I did. See? Oops, sorry. <laughs> see? Happy jellyfish. And see? Kind of fun. Now, here's another option that you could do. I did not do this on my first one, but what else you can do is if you want this to be hung around the house somewhere, maybe in the bathroom, maybe on the fridge, wherever. Cut a piece of string, make a little loop. If you have some tape or you don't have tape and you want, want to just glue, go ahead, flip your jellyfish over to the back. Put two pieces of string, keep your loop up here. And there you go. You could hang it now. See? You can make it dance too. So there we go. That's how you make a jellyfish. All right, before time runs out, we're gonna reveal. So go ahead and put that to the side or hang it on your fridge. But if it's still wet with some glue, let that dry. Go ahead and set this to the side to dry. Maybe dry it on a paper plate or a plate if you have it. Okay. So now let's go back to our painting. Maybe it's dried a little bit. Okay. So, if you do have green, I'm gonna show you what you could do. Also, if you have white, you can make bubbles, but that's just up to you. But I'm just gonna show you what else you could do um, with the green. So remember, what two colors make green? And if you said blue and yellow, you are totally correct. But depending on how much blue and how much yellow, you're going to get a different shade of green or a different kind of green. So this is like a lime green. So it's got more yellow than blue in it. Now I have this kind of like sea, sea, sea green, like a deeper green happening in here. Now that's because I added more blue on top. Remember? All right. So what you could do is using a paintbrush or you could use your finger, whatever you want. Go ahead and make some squiggle lines. Like I said, you don't have to do this part. But does anyone know what I'm making? And if you said seaweed, then you are correct. I'm just making seaweed. So seaweed is also found in the ocean and it's a plant that is grown and lives in the ocean. and some animals eat it. Let 
like I said, you don't have to do this. All right. So uh, you can't really see it on mine, but you can just a little bit. And I just added three squiggle lines. So go ahead, maybe add some more paint, squiggle, squiggle, and I'm just moving my brush or my finger back and forth. Like, shoo, 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 shoo. Up, down, up, down, kind of like that. Now, I'll show you on a different piece of paper just so you guys can see it a little bit better. I'll do it on red. So take your green and we're going to start at the bottom. Just like that. If you want to practice on a piece of paper, go ahead and practice first before going on your actual piece. Go ahead and practice. All I'm doing is squiggle, squiggle, squiggle. So practice your squiggles. All right, now the moment of truth. Da -da -da -da. We're gonna reveal our fish to see what we have. All right, so go ahead, take a little piece of paper that may have lifted up while the paint has dried on it. Go ahead and lift it up. And there you go, you have a little fishy. That's number one, there's number two. Now, the, see how I got some paint in there? I wasn't careful in those spots. So that's why I had you hop like a bunny. Now, if you don't like that, you could always go ahead, uh, always go ahead, Ugh. sorry, take some water and a paper towel and you could have whoever's helping you clean that off for you. Or you could put white paint in there. You could always color that with white if you don't want to spend time, care if you're not careful and you don't, you could sm smear more but if you accidentally get paint here and you don't like that go ahead and put some white there or have someone help you to remove some of that paint see I like that a little bit better but you could put white in here but you have to be very careful and wait till it's dry if you are gonna put white paint here okay because then you're gonna get white in this and you're gonna get light blue in here um, so that's why I recommend just putting some paper towel in some water and then wiping it away. But kiddos, if you have an adult present, have them do it for you if, you're, if you know you're not that careful and that delicate. Okay? Alrighty. And go ahead, sign your name. Using a marker, sign your name. You could do it at the front or back, but sign your name on it if you know how to write your name. If you don't, perfectly fine. Maybe practice writing your name on a separate sheet of paper. And then go ahead and sign your artwork, because if you are making something cool like this, or you made something like this, always put your name on your artwork, so that way people know that you did it. Okay? Alrighty. Went a little bit over time. But that's okay. All right. Hi. I hope you guys enjoyed making our ocean animals today. I hope you guys had a lot of fun. I feel like this is a fun, easy project um, for kids of any age to do. I feel like there are endless combinations of things that you could do. You could print fish off the internet, have them cut it out, put it on a piece of canvas, and just you know hop like a bunny over the pieces of paper that you have on the canvas. So you could do so many different things with this. Also, remember we did color mixing. Uh, what two colors make green? I'm not gonna say, but maybe it's blue and yellow. I guys, I want you to really learn your color mixing. So blue and yellow do make green. So I hope you guys learned that today at least. Uh, so I guys, uh, I hope you guys had fun. I'm sorry, I'm like mixing up my words. Uh, I hope you had fun and I hope you are enjoying my videos. Please continue to stay clean, stay safe, stay healthy, and remember to keep active, not watching too much TV, uh, maybe some, but remember enjoy the weather outside if it's nice out, uh, but please remember to stay, stay healthy. I want you guys to stay healthy and I hope to see you guys soon. All right, have a good one. Bye-bye.